G'day Coppers, welcome back to the bush. Actually, Matt's carport again today. Now Matt's about to head off on a central Australian journey through the Unidata and up to Ayers Rock. So we're gonna check the bearings and brakes on his camper before he heads off. First up though, we need to secure it. And we'll be doing that with chocks on the other side. Okay, now we've secured the camper, let's crack the wheel nuts. Righto, now that's done, let's jump under the camper, jack it up and put it on a jack stand. Alright, so now the camper is securely on a jack stand. Let's remove the wheel. Now don't forget, if you're not working on a nice concreted surface like we are here today, keep your wheel nuts in a nice secure place and don't let the dirt get down into the threads. keep them there so we don't miss them later. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is remove the bearing cup. You need to use a screwdriver or a cold chisel. Just work your way in around the edge. Once that's been removed, we'll need to get this split pin out. Now for the trusty Leatherman, bend your back straight. Might need a little bit of encouragement. Now our split pins out, we need to remove the adjustment nut for the bearings. That one's nice and loose. And our bearing preload washer. It's also removed our outer race, our outer bearing. Okay. Now if the brakes aren't on, and I'll go and do that in a second, should be able to remove our drum. Okay, now the brakes are off, we should be able to remove the drum. Okay. Check your spindle, put a good wipe down. What you're looking for is burrs or anything that might catch the bearing. And this one looks pretty good. Then we might give it a rub up with a bit of emery tape. And now we'll go and inspect the hub. All right, so there's a couple of ways to get the seal out here. Now we're gonna use a seal puller today, or you can simply flip it upside down and bash on the bearing, because we're not reusing the bearings anyway with a mallet and a brass drift and that'll push the seal out, but we'll pull it out. These things are worth their weight in gold, let me tell you. Seal's out. We'll pull the bearing out and next we'll go over to the bench and pull the races out. Okay, now for the other side.
That's it. Now both races are out. We'll clean it up and we'll insert the new races into the hub. We have to make sure we get right in the edge there. And not everything around the corner there is clean. If we don't, the bearing race won't seat properly. Okay, so we've cleaned up the bearing race seat here and the bearing race itself. And make sure you get the orientation correct. So it needs to be pointing outwards. The, the thinner part needs to be towards the outside and the thicker part needs to be towards the inside. It's going to be an absolute bear to get them out if you don't put them in the right way. Now you can use, and I have previously used a brass drift. However, we're going to cheat a little bit here. And we're going to use a bearing race seating tool. This gets us whacking on it nice and concentrically. Now if they don't go in square, stop what you're doing, get them from the other side and push them out and have another go. You don't want to get them too cocked sideways, otherwise you'll never get the things out. So let's drive it in. Now you heard the pitch change, that means it's fully seated. But don't trust your ear. Go to the back. I don't know if you can see in the video here. Right down the bottom there, you can see whether it's seated fully or not. And that one's fully seated now, so we'll turn it over and we'll do the other side. Okay, now it's time for the back race. And again, don't forget the tape is towards the outside. Now, if you had used a brass drift, these things wear on the edges and there might be a bit of accumulated brass on the inside which you'll need to clean out. But because we're using the bearing race seating tool, we're not going to come across that problem. So again, set it in nice and square and just drive it home. Again, we heard the sound of the pitch change, so that should be fully driven home. But again, we'll check from this side. And that certainly looks fully driven home. All right, now it's time to grease the bearing. You can use a, a bearing greaser, however, I don't have one here. So what I'll do is get a bit of grease, put it in the palm of my hand. And I'll work the grease into the bearing through the back and into the front. Now you should be able to see in the camera there that the grease is now starting to come out of the bearing. Once that's done, you're going to start working your way around the edge and you want the grease to work right around the edge. The full circumference of the bearing. This could take a while. Okay, a little bit of grease around the edge there. And don't forget a bit of extra grease onto the race itself before we pop that bearing home. Okay, now we'll put the seal on. Okay, now comes time to drive in the seal. Now, if you're going to see a lot of dust, water crossings and whatnot, it's not a bad idea to run a little bit of blue silicon sealant or red silicon sealant, depending on your persuasion, around the edge there. Though this one isn't going to. Now, I've swapped out the bearing driving tool and I've turned it around so what it's going to allow me to do is push that in concentrically from the center and we'll just drive that home it's imperative and as you can see here it's gone in a little sideways so make sure that you can drive it in square as possible it's very easy to ruin these ones Again, we just heard the pitch change and that means it's flush against the edge here. Now what we need to do to complete this side, just pack in behind it. A bit of grease right around the edge. And that'll help support the spring, which is providing the tension onto the spindle in the camper. Now 
And don't forget to wipe off the edge because that'll just attract dust and muck. That side's right to go. Now, now while we're looking at the brake, drum and hub assembly, don't forget to check out the brake service here for scoring. Also scoring on the brake activation service here with the electromagnet grabs hold and pushes the drum uh, pads out against the braking surface here and uh, make sure everything's in good condition. Okay, so once we've done that, we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. Righto, so now it comes to the front assembly. Now there is a, a bit of a repository for grease inside here. So I encourage you to get a little bit of grease and just push it into that deposit there before grabbing your bearing and greasing that up. These are new bearings by the way. You can't keep your olds if they're in good condition of spares. A little bit around the edge and we'll just pop it in. Once I get my grease off my hands that brake drum hub assembly we're now ready to put back onto the camper. So when it comes to assessing the condition of your braking assembly, firstly check out the pad depth. Okay, we need to make sure that firstly it's even wear and that there's still plenty of pad depth left. Now these ones are starting to get down a little bit, however Matt will be checking this again in 12 months and you'll probably be replacing them then. And your electromagnet as well, so this is how the braking activates. There's a coil of wire in here. Um, current is, and electricity is passed through the coil of wire it uh, magnetizes the core here the core then grabs hold of the inside of the brake and as the wheel rotates it pushes against here pushes the brake pads out against the drum and that's how it activates the brakes okay uh, don't forget your spindle assembly here now make sure there's no scoring on that and if there is you can rub it down a little bit with a bit of emery paper or, or very fine sandpaper and also your seal surface up here. Make sure that's also in good condition. Now once we've done that and everything looks good, we can put the hub brake assembly back on. And it could require a little bit of encouragement. There we go, that didn't go in too badly. Now next thing we need to put on is the bearing thrust washer. It's a nice thick washer, make sure it's nice and clean. Maybe we can put a smear of grease on it. I'll pop that over there. And then the bearing preload nut. As you can see this one isn't all the way home though, there we are. Now when it comes to tensioning your bearings, don't forget this one's going to see off-road, it's going to see corrugations, it's going to see lumps and bumps, we need to make sure our bearing races are seated properly. And the only effective way I know of doing that, and mechanics turn away now, you won't appreciate this, is just to get a hammer and make sure it's seated all the way up. Once we've given it a bit of a whack, Grab your shifter, tighten it up a little bit, do exactly the same thing again. Give it a spin. And then tension it up again. It's imperative that we get them seated. We've got a little bit more movement out of it that time. Find a bit more. No 
Okay, so we can make sure that she's fully seated now and undo it a little bit and then we can set the bearings. We need to get a bit of tension on there. We need to make sure there's no movement in and out. Once we've done that, don't forget, you'll need to line up this castellated nut with the split pin, which I've done there. Now, you'll have to split the split pin. Obviously, there's a split down the middle. So you grab a new split pin, they're one use only items. Run him all the way down to the bottom. Grab the outer. Push him up. And just whack him home with a hammer. That's good for that. Now we're going to have to shorten off this one. Right, and now we've done that. You can use a cold chisel or screwdriver, whatever you have convenient. Now all that's going to do is if the bearing preload nut, the castellated nut here, does loose it off, it's obviously not going to turn because it's, it's uh, movement will be impeded by the split pin. Okay, last thing to do is the bearing cap. Again, make sure the surface is nice and clean. And those again who are doing lots of dusty work or perhaps water crossings, it doesn't hurt to put a bit of blue sealant or maybe red sealant around the edge. And grab your hammer and gently run him over. Make sure it's seated all the way around. All right, now we can put the wheel back on. Okay, now we have to put the wheel back on. Rolling back into position. Place him over the studs. Make sure we start the nuts by hand. Now, if they're a bit dry, you can put a bit of WD. Ideally, anti sees but who keeps that on the threads? And that'll stop corrosion in there later on. It's imperative to make sure you start them all by hand. Even if you're about to do a ratchet, use a ratchet gun like we are. If they're not going on easily, find out why. Do the two opposites. Now not being an overly powerful ratchet gun, this one's just nipped it up. Now what we'll do is lower it down off the jack now, and then we'll do a final tension. Okay, now we've got it back on the ground, it's time to tension the wheel nuts. We start at the top. Now you can use a torque wrench for this, if you've got one. Or I go by the grunt and a half method. And then go work your way opposite around. Now, once we've done the last one, just to double check that it's not going anywhere, start at the top, work your way around clockwise. So one, and call them out. Two, three, four, five, and now I'm 110% sure that every single wheel nut on that wheel 
is tensioned. Now, if you like this video, or even perhaps learned a thing or two, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. That's a thumbs up. Or if you didn't enjoy it, don't forget to give us a thumbs down. Twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.